Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, and in this video, I want to ask you a question, and I want a serious answer from you. I'm dead serious about this question. Listen carefully. Do we need a new American Diabetes Association? Think carefully and tell me your answer in the comments below, and I'm going to tell you some reasons why I think maybe we do. More than 38 million Americans have diabetes, and another 90 million probably have prediabetes. We don't know because so many cases go undiagnosed because the American Diabetes Association does such a terrible job of teaching doctors how to diagnose early diabetes, prediabetes. Every single year, over 100,000 Americans die from the complications of diabetes, the vast majority of them being complications from type 2 diabetes. Now, the American Diabetes Association says that they're partners for life with diabetics, but what I think the average type 2 diabetic would like to do is reverse their type 2 diabetes. And indeed, unlike other chronic diseases like Alzheimer's, kidney disease, Crohn's disease, Type 2 diabetes is completely reversible, and there's tons of research that shows this uh, without doubt that you can reverse it by making a few simple dietary changes, and yet the American Diabetes Association is silent on this. Now, when you press the American Diabetes Association on this, they'll say, yes, you can technically reverse type 2 diabetes with a low-carb diet, a ketogenic diet, a ketovore diet, or a carnivore diet, but somehow they still remain publicly very quiet about this, even though I've been reaching out to them for more than a year on Twitter, initially very, very calmly, very casually saying, hey, come on my channel, let's have a conversation about this. Dr. Bob, who's their public medical spokesman, I have invited him on this channel multiple times. Uh, the only thing I hear is crickets chirping. I never get a response from him. Uh, I have a friend who is a professor at Harvard Medical School. He went to school with Dr. Bob. He reached out to him in a private email. Nothing. Crickets chirping still. Uh, now, did you know that back in 2020, then... American Diabetes Association President Tracy Brown actually uh, revealed in a podcast that she had used a very low-carb diet, aka a ketogenic diet, to put her type 2 diabetes in remission. And it was only a few months later that she was no longer with the American Diabetes Association. Now, don't get me wrong, I have no... Uh, I have no information about the background of how she parted ways with the ADA. I have no details about that. All I know is, is when she talked about a very low-carb diet putting her type 2 diabetes in remission, she was no longer with the ADA. Here's a quote from Tracy Brown that may have got her in a little bit of hot water with the big pharma and the big food donators who give millions of dollars a year to the American Diabetes Association. Elevated blood sugars happen when you have sugars in, your, sugars in your body and you don't have insulin to manage the sugars in your body. Carbohydrates turn into sugars. So I just try to keep people, get people to be aware of how many carbohydrates you are actually putting in your body. Uh, that, that's great advice, but uh, very soon after she said this publicly, she was no longer with the American Diabetes Association. Now, many health expert gurus on the social media sites will claim that the ketogenic diet is a fad diet, it's dangerous, it's weird. Uh, they don't seem to know their medical history. The ketogenic diet, low-carb diets, carnivore diets have been around for hundreds of years and documented in the medical literature, in medical textbooks, in books written by doctors for over 100 years. This is not new information. Uh, you and I have rediscovered a proper human diet by doing our own research, but this has been rediscovered multiple times over the centuries. You can read more about this history of using low-carb, keto, and carnivore diets to put type 2 diabetes in remission or reverse it or cure it, however you'd like to look at it, by reading the great book called Rethinking Diabetes by Gary Taubes. Now, in the American Diabetes Association's own dietary guidelines, they say the following on page 217. 
buried deep, deep, deep in the back of the document. Low carbohydrate eating patterns, especially very low carbohydrate eating patterns, have been shown to reduce A1C. The metric that measures one's blood sugar levels over a period of time. And the need for diabetes medications. These eating patterns are among the most studied eating patterns for people with type 2 diabetes. It's in their own guidelines. They say that that low-carb keto is the most studied dietary intervention for people with type 2 diabetes. And yet, when's the last time you saw them tweet on X about, hey, you should eat low-carb? When's the last time on their Facebook post said, hey, you should eat a ketogenic diet? When's the last time you saw a commercial or a magazine ad where the American Diabetes Association said, hey, the most studied diet for, 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 for improving or reversing type 2 diabetes, the most studied, has the most research, is a low-carb or a ketogenic diet. You should eat that. And they, they'll say in back channels, well, nobody's going to listen. Nobody's going to do that. <clears throat> Yet at the same time, they're constantly putting out recipes because they've got a website dedicated to recipes, and it says diabetes-friendly recipes. Now, you being a type 2 diabetic, you would think, well, it's diabetes-friendly. That, that certainly must not mean that it's going to make my diabetes worse, but perhaps that's what they actually mean. It's diabetes friendly in that it's going to make you more diabetic. And then that's going to make their big pharma friends more money selling type 2 diabetes medications. And then also many of the recipes call for ingredients like Cheerios and other breakfast cereals, which is going to make their big food buddies who donate millions of dollars a year to the American Diabetes Association more money. So recipes like... Apple Crisp, a half cup serving, has 25 total grams of carbohydrates. Now, it looks delicious. Could you eat just half a cup? What about lemon chiffon with fresh berries? Again, a half cup serving, a size, you know, that Beckett could eat a half cup, and he's four and a half years old, 11 total grams of carbohydrates, seven grams of which are just pure sugar. What about oven-baked chicken taquitos? Now, that doesn't, that's not a dessert. That should be very low in carbohydrates. Oh, no, two tiny little cylindrical taquitos are 35 total grams of carbohydrates. And then what about power snack mix? Looks to me like that's got some Cheerios in it. Makes makes General Mills very happy that they've donated that money to the American Diabetes Association. One third of a cup, a third of a cup. That's the serving. Nobody's going to eat that. But one third of a cup has 19 grams of total carbs, 11 grams of which are pure sugar. Does the American Diabetes Association, are, are they diabetic people friendly or are they diabetes friendly? Because I'm very confused at this point. How about you? The American Diabetes Association thinks that people won't listen to them if they say, hey, eat a low-carb or a ketogenic or a carnivore diet. But millions of people listen to me when I say that. But they somehow think, ah, they, people just, they're not going to do that. I don't, we don't know what to do. As they promote Cheerios-laden recipes on their website. Now, if you live in another country, you may say, well, the American Diabetes Association has nothing to do with me, but ah, oh, you'd be wrong because the Diabetes Association or society in most countries follows the American Diabetes Association dietary guidelines and standards of care to the letter, very often cut and paste. So regardless of what country you live in, the American Diabetes Association has an inordinate say in what your doctor in your country recommends for you, what to eat, what medicines to take, and also remember that statement that type 2 diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. You can never cure it. You can only manage it. That's straight from the American Diabetes Association. Now let's talk about the business side of the American Diabetes Association. Uh, they have a $100 million annual budget they have 600,000 volunteers and 20,000 members from the healthcare community. Imagine if we had a diabetes association 
that had that many volunteers and that big of a budget and that many medical community members, but was giving diabetics, people with diabetes, good nutrition advice. Imagine the impact that would have on the health of the entire world. Now, you may remember the story of Sir Frederick Banting. He's the doctor who invented insulin back in the 1920s. And he said, this doesn't belong to me. This belongs to the people, to the world. We need to get this out there. And he could not produce it in enough quantity to help all the diabetics of the world. So he sold his patent to Eli Lilly for one dollar. Yeah, that's, that's how medicine is practiced. That's, that's how a doctor should behave. And then Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk and Novartis turned around and turned selling insulin into a billion, multi-billion dollar business for each of those giant corporations. Uh, they're not selling it for a dollar for some reason, even though Sir Banting sold it for a dollar. Now, let's talk about the American Diabetes Association and where all their money comes from. They've got this $100 million budget. Where do they get all that money? Now, first of all, let me tell you that the American Diabetes Association plays their financial cards very close to the vest. Being a nonprofit, you would think that it should be public knowledge. Everybody that donates to them and how much they donate, but evidently, that's not true. Um... Financial filings show that between 2017 and 2024, more than 50 big pharma and big medical manufacturing companies donated over $134 million to the American Diabetes Association. Now, with, just with that knowledge alone and, and just some basic knowledge of human nature, you can see that if they came out and said, hey, you should eat a low-carb or a ketogenic diet. You'll completely reverse your type 2 diabetes. All these millions of dollars from Eli Lilly and Novartis uh, and Novo Nordisk, they would dry up. That money would disappear. Now, surely, to goodness, the American Diabetes Association is more committed to helping people with type 2 diabetes reverse their diabetes than they are with getting millions of dollars in donations They've got million-dollar deals with CVS Pharmacy. They've got a million-dollar deal with DaVita. That's the dialysis company that I just did the interview with Dr. Mueller about the other day. You should really watch that video if you want to have your stomach turned by the uh, behavior of DaVita and Fresenius. And if you've ever been to the American Diabetes website, you, you know that what I'm about to say is true. Every five seconds, a pop-up window appears saying, hey, donate now. We'll, we'll match your contribution. It's literally donate, 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 donate. It seems that all they care about is raising money, but then not giving people with diabetes good diabetic advice. So if you just went by the common sense approach of saying, well, okay, who, who's really benefiting from the advice that the American Diabetes Association is currently putting out. Well, uh, big pharma and big medical equipment manufacturers, they're making billions each and every year based on the advice that the American Diabetes Association gives to people with diabetes. Uh, big food, because of all the recipes that, that call for Cheerios and Splenda and all the other big food products, they're making billions of dollars a year. Well, what about people with diabetes? Well, they're suffering amputations. They're suffering blindness, severe neuropathy, kidney failure, having to give themselves multiple shots of insulin to match the carbs that they ate in the American Diabetes Association recipe that's on the ADA website that says it's diabetes friendly. I don't know. You tell me. Who benefits from the ADA's recommendations? So, to sum up, let me be honest with you. I've tried for over a year to reach out to the American Diabetes Association through private emails, through Twitter posts, and through Facebook posts saying, hey, come on my channel. Let's have a conversation. Dr. Bob, come on my channel. Let's have a conversation. Well, guess what? I've had it. I'm done. I really think that we should form a new diabetes association that doesn't work for big pharma. 
that doesn't work for big food, that doesn't work for the big medical equipment manufacturers or big pharmacy, that works for people with diabetes, that says, hey, you've got type 1 diabetes or LADA, you deserve to have a normal A1C. You deserve to have a long, healthy life during which you don't have to have toes chopped off. You don't have to have dialysis. You don't have to go blind. You don't have to have a heart attack or a stroke prematurely. A, a diabetes association who says to everyone with type 2 diabetes, hey, basically what you've got is carbohydrate overdose syndrome. If you cut the carbohydrates in your diet low enough for long enough, you'll completely reverse your type 2 diabetes and you won't need all of these expensive medications from our big pharma buddies. Are you with me on this? Do you really do you feel like cuz I mean, you know me. I ain't scared. If you if enough of you guys say hell yes, we need a new diabetes association, I'll start a Kickstarter and we'll start raising money and we'll form a 501c3. And we'll, we'll do this. We'll start a new diabetes association and we'll leave the ADA in the shitty dust where they belong. Let me know in the comments what you think about this.